I am going to show you how to can your black beans at home. So I have a big five gallon bucket here of dried black beans. I buy these in bulk on Azure Standard. Um, they are a great price, they last forever, and I just home can them using my Denali pressure canner here. And when I can them at home, I usually do them in pint sized jars. And the reason for that is they're most like the same size of a can of black beans from the store. So when I'm using them in a recipe, I am able to just pull one of those out and it is as easy as if I were to go buy a can of black beans from the store. Typically, I like to soak my beans for a long soak overnight. But since I did not do that last night, I am going to show you an easy way to can these black beans and to get that same soak method. I like to soak my beans for at least a 24 hour period uh, because it does break down the phytic acid in the, the beans and it does make them easier to digest. Okay, so you're gonna first wanna measure out how many beans you need per jar. I'm gonna do eight pint sized jars into my canner. That is three fourths a cup of dry beans per Pint. So I am going to measure out three fourths a cup times eight. Okay, so now that I have all my beans in my pot, I am going to cover these with water. I'm going to pick out any bad pieces first. So if I see anything that's you know shriveled or or doesn't look right, kind of rotten, I'll go ahead and pick those out. Um, and then I'm going to cover this with water three times the amount to cover. So I, they're gonna soak up a lot of that water. I'm gonna put it on my stove top, bring it to a boil. Then once it's at a boil, I will go ahead and turn it off, cover it, and let it sit for one hour. This will speed up the process and do the same thing as if I were to have soaked them overnight. Okay, it's been about an hour, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill my jars. So I have all of my jars washed and cleaned with warm soapy water. I'm using a wide mouth funnel here, and I am going to fill each of my jars with the beans with a very generous one inch head space. You wanna give them plenty of space to expand as they cook in the canner. So if you overdo it, you're going to have your, your seals either bow and not seal at all, um, or you're just gonna have a lot of seepage and it's just not gonna work out. So you wanna give yourself plenty of space. <clears throat> so when I say a generous head space, a uh, generous one inch head space, I mean like one to one and a quarter, one and a half. You really wanna give them plenty of space. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, and this is optional, you do not need to do this when you're canning your own beans at home, but it does give them nice flavor, is add some salt to your jars. So I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon of salt to each of these pint jars. If you are doing quart sized jars, you're going to want to do one teaspoon of salt. Again, you do not need to add salt if you do not want to. Now I'm just going to top each of my jars off with some water. So I'm gonna make sure to keep that one to one and a quarter inch head space. You wanna give them plenty of space so I'm gonna go ahead and put some water in, but not overdo it. Once you have reached your headspace, you're gonna to wanna to take the back of a wooden spoon or a little tool here, and you're going to stick it down into your jar a couple times. You just wanna get out any air pockets. And once you've gone through each of your jars and done that, you're gonna go ahead and make sure you still have the right headspace. So if your headspace has changed at all after getting out the air pockets, you will wanna adjust that with water. I'm gonna add just a little bit to this one. And I think that's the only one, maybe a little bit to this one. Okay, now it's time to wipe the rims of all of your jars. This is a very important step. I have a clean dish towel here that is wet. Um, if you're doing a food that's really sticky or, or um, like a ready-made meal or something like that, and you feel like your rims need more than just water, you can dip it in some white vinegar. But I'm just gonna wipe each of the rims of my jars to make sure that there are no salt particles or anything on them. If there is, then you won't get a proper seal. 
Now I'm going to use my wide mouth Denali canning lids and cap each of my jars. And then I'm going to take my Denali canning rings and I'm going to add them on, screwing them down to fingertip tight. That just means once you hit resistance, you're going to stop. You don't want to crank your jars down super tight, otherwise you will get your um, lids to bow and you may not get a seal. Now it's time to get them all into the canner. So I have my canner here filled with about two inches of water. You wanna make sure there's enough water in your canner that it won't evaporate when you're in the canning process because these are going to be in the canner for one hour and 15 minutes. So that is a long time. So you wanna make sure that you have enough water in there that when the water does evaporate a little bit, that it's not going to run out of water, but you do not want your jars submerged. When you pressure can, you do not need your jars completely submerged in the water. You just need enough in there to be in there during the whole processing time. As I'm putting my jars in, I'm making sure that they have room in between, that they're not touching. And I'll get my last one in, right in the center. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and get our lid on. Once you have locked your lid into place, you will notice that my weighted gauge is already on. I keep that on all the time. That is the beauty of the pressure canner by Denali Canny. The tanker is that it's very simple to use. There's not a lot of moving parts. So it will have its automatic vent right here in the handle. And so I will just lock my lid into place, turn my stove top on, and I will let it go until it does it all of its own thing. It's going to automatically vent here. Once it's done venting, it'll seal itself off and start to build pressure. When I've reached pressure, and my weight here starts to hum and rock back and forth, I will start my timer for one hour and 15 minutes for pint size jars. If you're doing quart size jars, you will want to do one hour and 30 minutes. Okay, so it has been in the canner for one hour and 15 minutes. The timer has gone off. I turned off my stove top and let it come down all the way to zero and then waited 20 minutes. Might have even been a little bit longer than 20 minutes. Now I'm ready to go ahead and take my lid off and get the jars out of the can. The longer you wait to let it sit, the easier it is for this lid to come off. Now I'm going to gently remove each of my jars place them over here on this clean dish towel and let them cool down completely before I wipe them, take off the rings and label them for what's in the contents and the year. Then they're ready for my shelf to be used in any recipe that I'd like.